Congratulations. 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 Thank you guys, huge fans right there. Um, 30k subscribers, what, what can we say? 30k, I don't really know what to say to this really. I've been meaning to do a thank you video since 100 subs, but I've been so lame I haven't done it. But today, I present to you, Daddy Cringes Combo Wombo. Yes, that even tickled my cringe glands, just saying that. What can you expect in the combo? Well, we have some entitled parents, obviously. You guys love that stuff. Some malicious compliance, of, and some choosing beggars, some TIFU, and some cringe clips, some of my favorite cringe, cringe clips, and a q and A. I'm not sure what order they're gonna be in as yet, because I haven't got around to the editing. It's gonna take me ages, I think. I'm not sure yet. And how long, may you ask? Well, as a little thank you, I'm gonna tickle your pickles, and I'm gonna give you one hour of cringe-worthy content. Yes, one hour, guys. I haven't edited this yet, so bear with me, get involved, and let's get started. An awful mother tries to force her daughter to date me. So, for some backstory, I'm a gay male, 16 years old, nothing too special look-wise. I'm very good friends with one girl who I met in my clarinet section in a band. A few days ago, we both decided to see Jaws and Peels, us, 9.5 out of 10 I'd say. We both enjoy horror movies, so that worked out. Since us is technically R-rated, her mum had to come. You all can see where this is going. Cast, for anyone new, me, moi, F, friend, EM, entitled mum. So the night started off fairly normal. F came and picked me up. EM sat in the back seat of the car. EM was on her phone, which I thought was rude, but alas. So we were mostly talking about memes and spilling the hot tea on the way to the cinema. Once we got there, we spent 20 minutes looking for parking, the normal mall stuff. We got our tickets and all was well. Little did we know, her mum would never walk across the ticket station with us. So nature called and as I started to walk into the bathroom, I overheard EM saying, What's your boyfriend's name again? F explained how in fact I wasn't her boyfriend. F explained how I wasn't in fact her boyfriend. I didn't hear much else because I got to the bathroom and at the time, I thought it was just a simple misunderstanding. A bit later, I walk out the bathroom and shit went down. Excuse me OP, friend is saying that you two aren't dating. Yes, we're just friends. It's just a pr- Bullshit. Mum, stop. No. I know what you teenage boys want. Why don't you just date her? I make a confused look and gesture to F. Like, are you hearing this? I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. Are you saying my daughter is ugly? I know that you boys are only into pretty girls. Mum, stop. Listen here, if I were to date anybody, large emphasis on that, it'd be because I enjoy being around them, not because they look, in air quotes, attractive. Are you mocking my daughter now? I saw how you put quotes on attractive. Were you not listening? Yeah, you missed my entire point. At this point, people were crowding around. Both of us had maintained relatively calm and passive aggressive, but the facade was cracking. I didn't know how long it would take me to punch the shit talker in the face. Also, F looked about ready to cry. Now, if you have any respect whatsoever, you'll date my daughter. In fact, you should kiss her right here. I'm sure you wouldn't want to humiliate yourself in front of all these people. Mum, stop! I start screaming. Are you hearing your set? EM screaming even louder. If you have any respect, you'll date my daughter. Me, having run out of options. Okay, you know what? I don't care anymore. It's only fair that I tell you, I am gay. She stops dead. She seems to stare at me, sizing me up. Then she lets loose. She clogs me straight in the nose and knocks me to the ground. The crowd was on her in a flash, restraining her despite her threats. I don't remember anything clearly from that moment, but I know she got detained and arrested later. For me and F, we got refunded tickets and the pass to see us for free, even without a guardian. Some nice man even gave us a coke. F was crying for a while after that, and she ended up leaning on my shoulder for the rest of the movie. I have no doubt that her mum would have thought we were dating from that. But part of being GBF, gay best friend, is that you need to be the emotional support, and almost like a parental figure at points. I was genuinely worried for her. 
and I still am. Her father died of cancer a few years ago, and so I didn't know where she can go away from EM. I desperately want to get EM back for that, but who knows. The trial is in May, and I will definitely keep you all updated, just in case she ends up walking free. Comment revenge suggestions, please. Good night. We've had a few of these stories before where like parents try to get like one to date the other and it's absolutely crazy. What parent in their right mind would try and force someone to like date their daughter? Like almost like pimp them out, you know? It's like, yes, you, you take them, you give them a kiss right now, right here. Who does that? Just let them grow up. But then she hits him. She hits him in the end and now she's gonna get pay for it. You gotta feel sorry for the friend as well because She's the one who's got like a psycho mother. Absolutely crazy. Oh, don't worry, it's just the flu. A few years ago, my seven year old niece, DN for darling niece, was placed in hospital for a congenital heart defects. Family from all over the place came down for support. And since I was the favorite aunt, that went without question, I'd be there. The surgery went smoothly, but for the next few days, she had to recover in the ICU. And we were given explicit instructions to disinfect before entering the room. Mostly everyone followed the rules, but here comes my aunt-in-law, AIL, and her husband, H. I happened to be the only one there because I agreed to stay behind and give DN company as everyone else goes to the cafeteria to eat. Oh, hey, aunt-in-law and husband. How are you? Hey, Momo girl. Looking better than ever. I completely ignore his comment. Um, I didn't see either of you use the hand sanitizer as you walked in here. Niece just had her open heart set. Momo girl, don't be so uptight. We just wanted to see the niece. Aunt-in-law moves over to the niece, who looks very uncomfortable, and I get up from my chair to put myself between Aunt-in-law and niece. I finally notice that Aunt-in-law has a runny nose and a slight cough. Are you sick, Aunt-in-law? I can't let you near niece if you are. Oh, don't worry, it's just the flu. The doctor said it'd be fine to see the niece. Yeah, sweetheart, just let my wife see niece. Niece is telling them all the time to go away, and they wouldn't listen. So I run up to the desk and tell them there are people with the flu trying to see niece. The people stationed there immediately asked aunt-in-law and husband to leave, but not without aunt-in-law calling me a prude bitch while she was at it. Niece made a full recovery and now is a very active kid, so it's a happy ending for mostly everyone. Oh my word, this is a new one on me. <laughs> the girl just had open heart surgery, so you know, you follow those rules, surely. She's been through enough without you spreading the flu in there. Who knows what could happen if she got the flu after she just, or she's already recovering, her body's already trying to deal with enough and you're gonna give her the flu. Ugh, there's just no words for some people, really. Entitled aunt and cousin hijacked my birthday. I finally have enough karma to post this here. So yeah, long story, so buckle up. As some background, my family has a weird opinion on birthday parties. They feel like they're a waste of money, and throwing one means you've got money to spare and flaunt. So, being that I grew up in a family that was all about appearances, when me and my sibling weren't, we went to a lot of birthday parties and never had ones of our own. Anyway, one year I'd been really sick leading up to my birthday, so I begged my parents for a birthday party so I could see all my friends that I hadn't been able to for the past few weeks, and after begging, I was going to get my Rugrats party. I have a cousin who is a complete spoiled brat, and the entitled one here. That's a few days older than me because of how our birthdays fell that year. She celebrated hers one weekend and mine was going to be the next weekend. For her birthday, she had a laser tag party with some of her friends and a few of our cousins. It was no cake, just pizza, laser tag and candy bags. It was a fun party, I didn't remember anyone complaining. So cue my party, a couple of my friends are there and pretty much my entire family. Entitled cousin, EC, and her mother, EA, show up pretty early, tell me happy birthday and put their gift under the table. Not more than five minutes later, I hear EC start saying how much she loves Rugrats, how beautiful decorations are, and how this is a great looking party. She then turns to her mum and says, tell Tio thank you for throwing me a great birthday party. I turned to her and said, this was my birthday, not hers, as she had hers the week before. And her response was, so? That was last week. This is my party this week. I again told her no and even showed her the cake which said my name on it. She immediately started crying and her and her EA went over to my dad. EA started calling my father inconsiderate that we wouldn't include EC in the birthday celebration because we were only a few days apart and it was like throwing a party for one twin and excluding the other. Me and EC weren't even close. I could never stand her. She went on to say how EC didn't get a cake for her birthday 
because they couldn't afford it, which is bullshit because cake is way less than laser tag and not all the family got to go because once again, they were poor and couldn't pay for everyone. We were so much more well off to be able to afford all this and we should share the day with EC so that she can have a proper party with her family. My dad gave in and said she can be up there with me when we sing happy birthday. So we went about the party until it was time to sing and shit really hits the fan. They take the top off the cake and EC and EA remember that my name is the one on the cake. EA grabs a knife and literally scrape my name off the cake. When they were singing, People said my name first and EA stopped them and said the name should be in age order, meaning EC's name comes first and had them redo the song. EC got to cut the first slice of my cake, the age thing again. And then when it came to opening presents, something I usually do after the party, EA insisted we do it now and give EC some of the gifts so she didn't feel left out. Most of the gifts were clothes and me and EC weren't the same size, so she couldn't take those but one gift from my parents was a turquoise and white Furby that I've been bugging them about since Christmas. I was so excited when I opened it up, but so was EC. She said the one she got for Christmas broke and was excited to get a new one and tried to take it from me. I held tight and said it was mine. EA said I needed to share my gifts with EC because it was our birthday. I told her no, so she tried to take it from me and I threw it behind the table where all the other gifts were. We both got up to run for it and I got to the table first and took the remaining amount of cake and threw it in her face. EA went off, called me a spoiled brat who needed to learn some manners and went to slap me but one of my older brothers got in the way and grabbed her, telling her she needed to leave. After some arguing, she took EC, like six favour bags and the gift she brought for me and left. And while I've seen them at the family gatherings over the years, that was the last time either of them actually talked to me. I didn't win the day, but never having to interact with them again was definitely a win. Oh my word, what a roller coaster! <laughs> That's insane! Um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty cross with your dad for actually giving in to them. I'd have told them no immediately. That she scraped your name off the cake, said you have to share presents and all this. It's just been no, no, no. You can either like it or lump it and get out of the house, you know. There's no way! And you just try taking your Furby. Oh, should have lost an arm for that from me. <laughs> Entitled mum got mad that my mum wouldn't give her another kid's clothes. So my mum has a home daycare and a number one problem is always the parents never send changes of clothes for their kid. Or they will, but when my mum has to use them, they don't send replacements. It's got so bad, no matter how many notes, texts or emails my mum sent out, Eventually, she told the parents that she wasn't going to do this anymore and if their kid didn't have backups, then that's how they'd stay for the rest of the day. They're inside, it's getting close to spring and they won't go outside if this is the case. This has actually gotten parents to get on their game. But she's reminded me of one parent that crossed the line. This was about five years ago, so some details are a bit fuzzy. This parent was terrible about sending things in general. She'd forget to send lunch for the kid, so my mum had to make it. She'd forget to send back clothes or bring in more diapers for her son. He was two and not yet potty drained. She would get so annoyed if my mum told her she had to bring something, almost like she expected my mum to. My mum hated this woman, but this was when she recently reopened after taking years off to help my dad with his small business, so she didn't have too many kids and we really needed the money. Anyway, one day the same thing happened. Two year old peed through his diaper and ultimately through his pants. There were no backups. He did this right before pickup, so even if my mum wanted to, she wouldn't have been able to have them done in time. She also used to do this, but won't anymore, because it's not fair to her, and she likes to remind parents that an actual centre wouldn't do that, so they can't expect her to. I was home that day, helping. I'm a licensed daycare substitute through the state, and got it so I can help my mum when she needs me to. So, the kid is in his diaper, come pick up. Ian walks in, and she's furious. Where are his pants? She asked in a snippy, angry tone. He peed through his diaper and soaked his pants. They're in that bag. He didn't have any backups. You didn't wash them. Even if I did, it just happened half an hour ago, so they would have been ready in time for you anyway. But I don't wash kids' clothing, as per my policy. We have places to go. I can't bring him out like that. You have to bring him home then. We don't have time. She looks at the cubby system my mum has and goes to grab one of the clothes brought for the other boy around her son's age. What are you doing? We'll borrow these. Now, there were a few issues with this. One, EM's son was bigger than the other boy. Two, my mum didn't let people borrow each other's stuff without parents' permission, and the other mum had already picked her son up. And three, she knew that his mum would never bring them back. 
She couldn't even bring in her own son's clothes. No, you can't do that. They're another child, and I didn't even think they'd fit. They'll have to do. I'm sorry, but I can't allow it. I don't think the other child's mum would be okay with that. But he needs pants. Well, then you need to remember to bring backups. Ian was furious. She looked at me as if I could do anything. But I just went back to playing with the other child that had yet to be picked up. Then Ian storms past me to the dress-up corner. She rips the pants off the fireman's costume and puts them on her son. What are you doing? We're borrowing these. You're here, so I'm assuming it's okay. Now, normally my mum didn't let kids bring toys or items from daycare home, unless it was their craft project, but she got an idea. She allowed EM to do it, but then would not stop harassing her over them. She sent one Her text a day, put a note in the back home, because reminding the mum to bring the fireman do. pants back. So why and would you think it's okay to try and to ensure she still have, have, have with those when that didn't work, my mum contacted her ex and you're going to be the father of her kids. It. Her ex was a lot nicer and on top of anyway, stuff. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Entitled Parents. As always, click that like button, that subscribe button if you like the content. Eventually, Ian stopped bringing her kids together. Either No word, no response to text or calls, nothing. It's like she disappeared. It's been five years and after three of them, my mum ended up selling the stuff Ian never picked up. <sighs> now I know parents are busy people but there's no excuse for like not bringing them extra clothes I mean most of us got nieces and nephews and things like that or younger children around we know they pee themselves like all the time when they're younger and they're not potty trained and it's just like you can't expect other people to be cl well they obviously they will clean them up but provide clothes for, for them as well it's just taking the mick a bit isn't it <laughs> Hi, I saw your ad on Gumtree. Regarding the smart TV, it's price negotiable. Hey man, yeah of course. What kind of price were you looking for? I was thinking maybe 150 instead of 500. That's way too low man. How about 450? Not a chance. Thanks for wasting my time. <laughs> the cheek of him that he says he's wasting his time. <laughs> sure thing, how would you like to pay? Ugh. What about a big thank you instead? I like your work. We do not pay people for this kind of job in my country. I don't know, you don't waste any resources by creating a design. It'll only take you an hour or two. And you could sacrifice a bit of time for me, can't you? No, I really cannot. I had multiple clients from Germany and all of them seem to know it's normal to get paid for a graphic design. Man, please, it's only clicking a mouse. No big deal. I was really nice to you. Please? Hello? I am a customer. Okay, go die. Blocked. Can you believe he's actually calling himself a customer? What kind of customers actually don't pay for shit? <laughs> I wish I could give no stars. I ordered a pair of children's shoes. The website said they were free and I jumped at the opportunity because I thought it might have been a promotion or something. I received the confirmation email and everything. The next day, they rang me to tell me that they had a glitch on their website and the shoes were out of stock. Why were they on their website? Why didn't the website say they were out of stock? They then refused to send anything out because of their mistake. There was not even an apology given. We'll never be ordering from this website again. Rudest people ever. Hi Shaylee. In this case, sorry I have to disagree. You ordered a shoe that was yes, live online, but was sold out, which we apologize for. That's why we rang you to offer alternative options. The thing is, you ordered a shoe that had no size options because it was sold out. You still proceeded to order the shoe without a size being able to be picked. When no size options are available, it's a good indication that it's sold out. There is no other option available as a replacement, unfortunately, and we did offer to look after you with something else or simply cancel the order. But to be honest, the interaction over the phone and the way I was spoken to was aggressive and unwilling to resolve anything right up to when I was hung up on. Apologies for the experience. <laughs> the fact that they're like, they're trying to get like a free shoe because they thought it was a promotion, which is like, I can almost say fair enough, almost. But then they said, we'll never be ordering from your website again. <laughs> trying to get free shit. I mean, oh. selling a 90 pound Tommy Hilfiger jumper for 25 pound. And this is what I get. Hun, if you go lower, I'll literally buy today. Kiss, kiss, kiss. 25 including delivery then. It's a 90 pound sweatshirt which is basically brand new. The highest I can pay is 23 pounds as I'm a student, hun. 
I really want this though. I'm not fucking uni days. I don't know what uni days is, but she's negotiating over like two pounds. Two pounds. It's the jumper that you really want and you can't afford two extra pounds. I mean, come on. You can tell me exactly what you're looking for and how you want it done. Then I'll be accurately able to quote it. Here's a picture. What would the price for just one in general like these? Somewhere around 30 to $40. Not really happy with that price. I was thinking about $1 max. Why don't you basically ask me to do it for free? Yes, please. <laughs> Hello, I have an art request for you. And sorry, no commissions allowed. I have no way of paying you. I have a challenge for you. I want you to draw me and the Light Fury as mother and son in the hidden world. I just need one picture from a good artist like you. Anyways, here is what I want. It her nuzzling me and me hugging her in the hidden world. I can't really think of anything, so um, yeah. And draw Toothless as my dad too. Draw him smiling at me. Anyways, thanks, and I'll send you a picture of me so you can draw me. Thanks, have a good night. And one more thing. I know that art takes a lot of effort, and maybe even days, but I have a dream too, and have an art request accepted by an artist just as good as you. So I'm hoping you don't mind. Anyways, maybe you could do it during your free time and when you have the time to. Thanks, and I hope you understand. Hey, thanks. As much as I like to do a piece like this, it would take me anywhere between four to six hours to do and would be worth at least $40 minimum. I've charged other people this much for a piece, so I can't really just give you one for free. Hope you understand and find someone else willing. No, sorry, you're the only one that's good, man. Sorry, do my request, please, free. No commissions, remember, no commissions. No one else would do it, so please do it for me. Hmm, you're gonna have to do mine free. I know that might be hard to understand, but it's hard when you find someone that you can't pay. So, um, do it free, please. I just can't go asking all the artists to do my requests. I'm asking you, so, um, do requests is worth it. And do mine, please. I'm very sorry. Sorry, mate, you asked for a request and I'm allowed to deny it. If you love my art so much, you'd pay me for it. That money lets me make art in the first place. I can't just give stuff away free. If I do it, it's unfair to everyone else. Don't tell anyone, please, so it's free. And I do love your art. It still don't mean I'd pay you. Plus, I don't even have a job and I'm only 14 and my parents wouldn't pay a stranger just for art. So please do my request for free. Make my day. No commissions. No. <laughs> this is my job. Don't ask me for free things again if you don't understand and aren't willing to take no for an answer. Well, when then, start doing free art. Here, I'll help you out. Do free art. Do free art. Do free art. Besides, no one will pay you just for art. Okay? Any more advice? <laughs> Oh man, artists must just get this sort of stuff daily, especially like from 14 year olds who just want free stuff for their YouTube banners and things. <laughs> what do you want from McDonald's? Is dad going to pick it up? No, me. Can you drop it off at Commons? I'm starving. No. Why? Because I said no. I'm buying you food. And I won't be home for two hours. Heat it up when you get home. I'm starving. Should have had food before you left. I couldn't eat. I want my Big Mac large fries and Coke. No ice. Thank you. Bring me the food. No. You insist again I'm not buying it. Fine. <laughs> I mean, you're getting a free McDonald's. Even if it is cold, it's still, when you warm it up, it'll still be tasty. But you're insisting that he delivers it as well. Jeez. You all ain't shit. 400 Facebook friends and none of y'all message me your Hulu. What good are you? Yeah, I bet he lost some friends that day. I mean, I mean, wowee. Why? There's just no words for people like that, is there? Like people trying to share your Netflix account and stuff like that. It's just bugger off, get your own. Hello, for a film shoot, we had to build this beautiful coffin. Shooting is over. Now we're selling it. It's real size, six foot one. We can deliver in Manhattan or Brooklyn today only. You should donate it instead. You guys are really cheap. Oh my word. I can't tell if they were being sarcastic about it being beautiful or not. Because it's not, not really that pretty, is it? But still, expecting it for free. Or having to donate it. I mean, come, come on. You read it right. I'm looking for a free paint job for a super rare 1917 Echo Corvette hatchback. Here's the deal. I'll buy the materials you need and you do the bodywork. Minimal. And paint. In exchange, you get to use the pictures of the car to advertise your business or shop. Plus the car will be in many car shows. I will take your business placard 
as well as business cards to hand out. This car is very rare and very special and gets an insane amount of attention. This car is very rare and very special and gets an insane amount of attention. Interior has been removed, must be qualified and be able to show examples of your work. Thanks for looking. I wonder if he got anyone. It's the, it's the exposure thing again. Do free work for exposure. But this is a car, so you can go and buy any old crap classic car and just ask people to paint it for you. <laughs> it sounds like a win-win. Best price for the player? Hey, $2,195. All prices are on the website. Prices are fixed. Nah, I won't pay that much. No problemo. So what's the best price? $2,195. All prices are on the website. Prices are fixed. No, too expensive. I'm trying to negotiate the price. Sorry, all prices are fixed, unless you're ordering five or more. Are you a chatbot? Uh, yes. I want to speak to a real person. <laughs> I am real, sir. No, you're not. You keep repeating a script. <laughs> the fact that he's arguing with a bot then, if he thinks it's a bot, he's arguing right now. Customer service. Complaints. Put me through to customer service. Put me through to complaints. I want to speak to management. Real person, please. Speak to a real person. Putting you through to a real person now. Hi, I'm a real person. I've looked at your query. Prices are all under the ads. Fixed and not negotiable, unfortunately. Surely you can do better on the price. Unfortunately, Grant, prices are fixed, just like any other store. So no best price? Unless you're ordering five or more. Sorry, mate. I want two. That's two times $2,195. That's the price on the website. Best price for two. Sorry, I misunderstood. That would be 2,195 times two. No discount for two? Wait, are you a bot? To proceed further, you'll need to prove you're not a robot. Fuck you and your stupid machines. Please type in a word that appears in this image. Scrotum. <laughs> Dickhead, you're a bot. <laughs> Please type in the word that appears in this image. <laughs> I like the fact that the guy actually, even though he thought he was a robot the whole way through, still tried to converse with this guy. <laughs> TIFU by thinking divorce was an April Fool's gag. Let me preface this off by blaming all of you, the entirety of Reddit for desensitizing me and giving me major trust issues on April Fool's Day. So here it goes. Yesterday I got a group test from my wife, Sarah's side of the family, stating there was an emergency family meeting happening that night over dinner at my mother-in-law's, Barb's house. I immediately had April Fool's spidey senses starting to tingle, but we haven't got together since Christmas, so I overlooked it and said we, my wife and I, were in. We were the last to arrive and it was pretty somber when we walked in. We all sat down at the table and my wife's brother, Tim, informed the family that his wife, Ashley, had been having an affair and that they are divorcing. The affair was with a long time ago close family friend, Chris, who lived a block away. Chris's wife Jen had caught them when she came early one day last week and broke the news to my brother-in-law Tim. Both families have been friends for years. They live less than a block from each other. They each have been married for 15 plus years, have four kids right around the same age. Honestly, I have always thought both of them were picture perfect families. Hell, all four of them and their kids were at our house two weeks ago for a barbecue. Anyways, after airing a lot of dirty laundry and their plans to divorce, how it could affect the future family functions and open up to the groups of any questions, there was silence. I broke the silence with laughter and a slow clap. <laughs> Saying this was the best April Fool's gag I ever seen and I wasn't falling for it. I told Ashley especially <laughs> I told Ashley and especially Tim they need to consider going into theatre. Their performances were top notch and tears seemed genuine. Being the newest member of the family, my wife and I married six months ago, this was probably not the best thing to say in hindsight. I probably should not have said anything. Everyone in the room was horrified. My mother-in-law, who'd been crying the entire time, lost all composure. She left the room in hysterics and did not return before we left. Tim just shook his head and his cheating wife actually let out a brief chuckle before calling me out for being a dumbass for thinking this was a ruse. Then berating me for being so insensitive, the rest of the family sat in silence, shaking their heads as my wife berated me for trying to make a joke out of a serious situation. I am still dumbfounded. In hindsight, I probably should have just sat in silence, 
but I honestly feel like I was calling out an April Fool's gag. <laughs> I just got the picture of him just sort of sit there, clapping away, laughing, <laughs> slow clap. <laughs> Poor guy though, just imagine everyone's faces. Wife's a bitch though. TIFU, mishandling my daughter's first period. I'm divorced and I have my two girls every other weekend. One Saturday morning, my oldest girl comes into my room and says she's on the speakerphone with her mum. I hear mum say wake him up and then I wake up and address my child. Daddy, I have my period, she says. Um, okay, I get up, get dressed and point to my nine year old and say, you're in charge, I'll be right back. I go to the store and face with a sea of pads. I pick a box of pads and a chocolate bar. My neighborhood cashier asked me if I found everything okay. I said yes. I return home and give my daughter the bag. She asks what the chocolate for and I confidently reply, to make you happier. I leave her to her business assuming mum has groomed her in some way for this moment. For backup, I call up a girlfriend, a girlfriend, and told her about what was happening and she asked specifically what I bought for her. Depends, undergarments and chocolate. I bought her elderly diapers. <laughs> Dude, how did you get that wrong? It's not that difficult anymore, surely. I mean, I haven't had to do it, but it can't be that hard, surely. TIFU, at a Tinder date. About a year ago, I first joined Tinder. I've never been someone who likes a date, but as I've been rather occupied with school and video games, I never really took the chance to socialize and meet girls in, in the short 22 years of my life. So as we all get lonely sometimes, I decided to try my chances with Tinder. To my surprise, I got into a pretty nice conversation with a girl I matched with after a weekend of swiping and trying to think of ways to start talking with matches. I didn't really feel much of a connection with her to be honest, but I decided to at least invite her on a date to see if I liked her better in person. And also because I'd never been on a date before and wanted to try it out. Very brave my dude. She accepted to go out for a drink and so I met up with her the weekend after. It was a sunny day on a Saturday afternoon in the Netherlands. Just like in many other places, bars and restaurants in the Netherlands tend to set out chairs and tables on square in front of their doorstep to create their own terraces. So we picked one of those spots to have a drink. She ordered this huge like half litre iced latte, which I didn't even know existed. I just ordered an iced tea and we set our drinks on a small wooden table in front of us. As we got into conversation, I started to notice more and more. I definitely feel much of a connection with her which was too bad, but it happens. And she's still very kind and sociable. So I still intend to give the date my best in the hopes of changing my opinion. Eventually, the conversation came to a point where it started to die down. And I felt as she had done much of the carrying until that point. It was up to me to come up with a new topic of conversation. I frantically searched for something to say and noticed she was carrying a rather pretty ring. So I asked her about it. She excitedly latched onto the conversation topic and started to tell me about how precious it was to her. It being a family heirloom, which had previously belonged to her grandmother. While explaining, she took the rung off and tried to hand it to me so I could have a closer look. Being physically challenged dude that I am, instead of actually taking the ring from her hands, I fondled it a bit and dropped it below our table. Having doom scenarios of it getting lost between street tiles or something running through my head, I of course immediately dived after it in panic mode. Luckily I found it. But in my relief, I excitedly tried to sit upwards to tell her, which made me bump my head on the bottom of the table. This in turn, knocked over her absurdly large iced latte, which completely drenched my hair, face, beard and shirt in coffee. The girl being the nice person she was, completely forgot about her ring and ran inside to get me some tissues. This was a nice gesture, but it meant I had to sit for at least a whole 10 minutes, I don't know why it took her so long, at this restaurant table with a ring in my hand completely drenched in coffee, with this empty seat next to me and an empty coffee glass next to my iced tea. I had an unprecedented amount of people walking past me, some openly laughing, some looking with pity and others with open anger. A waitress at the restaurant belonged to the latter group. When the girl I was on a date with had returned, the waitress even came back to our table to ask the girl if she was okay and if she needed her to, to call someone for her and asking me to leave or making angry glances at me as if I'd done something terrible to the girl. At the time, it was quite embarrassing for me since I was also filled with nerves going on my first ever date. But in hindsight, I feel like it's a pretty good story. <laughs> I think it's a very decent story. I mean, it's cool that you still, I, I like the whole, I like the wholesomeness of this story that you were on a date, you wasn't really getting, that you didn't really feel anything, but you're still having a nice day and talking about her ring, way. Well, hey. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think it was really nice. 
Shame about the coffee thing though. But you got it right though. It's a nice story. And now it's on the internet for everyone to see. <laughs> TIFU by not wearing underwear. TIFU by not wearing underwear. This actually happened today. I just realized and I'm so embarrassed. I woke up late and had to go to a rehab hospital for physical therapy. I took a shower, threw on some yoga pants, a bra and a t-shirt and ran out of the house. The physio had me lay back on the table that was facing the entire gym with my legs in the air and knees bent back to work on my core. Everything went well. I got one hell of a workout and went about my day. Fast forward to now, I just went to the bathroom and discovered there's a huge hole in the crutch of my pants. <laughs> I am not and was not wearing any underwear. I don't know how I haven't noticed this until now. The entire gym of patients and physical therapists saw everything. Everything. I'm not looking forward to tomorrow. <laughs> I, I, what I'm quite surprised is you didn't feel a bit of a breeze. <laughs> Good luck with... Well, it's probably already your tomorrow by now, so hopefully it hasn't been too bad for you. <laughs> you can use whatever you can carry into the room. This is not my story, but my father's. He's told it to me on a few occasions growing up when it comes to thinking outside the box. And but without knowing it, he was teaching me how to be maliciously compliant to your own benefit, even if that term wasn't known to him at the time. My father is an electrical engineer and he got his degree from one of the toughest engineering programs in the US. This was in the late 70s, so well before the time of cell phones and programmable calculators. One of his final courses required him to take a really crazy high level calculus class. He describes it as one of those courses where at a three hour final with only five overly complicated questions and there were several students that still didn't finish it on time. The instructor at the time made an announcement to the class that he gave every year. For the final, you may bring in and use anything that you can carry into the room. He also gives that a warning that even previous copies of the test that could be given from other students still isn't cheating but that the test changes dramatically from class to class, so it wouldn't be much help anyway. My father, like most students, will take extensive notes, bring in the textbooks, pass copies of the test, organize copies of the homework, and the like in order to have the best chances. Minutes before the class, many people were showing up early for last minute cramming, and the stress level was exceptionally high among everyone, except for one individual. This hero is someone that my dad didn't know very well, they were both within a small group that made it this far in the academic program, but he was still barely passable acquaintance to my father. This guy was acting like he was sitting on a beach with a smirk sitting next to the person that nobody had ever seen before. Two minutes before the test starts, the two guys stand up and go right outside. My father remembers thinking that they must have cracked under pressure and given up. This was not the case. The person that nobody had ever seen before was a grad student in advanced mathematics who was a good friend of the engineering student. This guy then jumps onto the guy's back and then proceeds to be given a piggyback ride into the lecture hall where he made it a point to walk out of his way right in front of the teacher's desk in full view then lowers him into the desk without his feet even touching the floor. The teacher realised what was happening and did nothing but smiled in approval of this guy's creativity. He started handing out the test without even acknowledging what was happening. When the actual student gets his test, he writes his name on the top of the test and then hands it to his friend without a word. The grad student finishes the whole thing in around 1.5 hours and ended up getting the highest score on the test, breaking the curve. He told me that from then on, his use anything that you can carry into the room policy was amended and students weren't permitted to use other people to take the test for them. For those wondering, my father said he got a C plus. <laughs> that is so clever, that's very really clever though, to, to bring in another person to do the test for you. Sounds great. I was, I was thinking halfway through, like maybe you could use a computer, but he said it was before the time of cell phones, so late 70s, did they have computers about then? I don't know. Well, they certainly did have a wide internet, I guess. The story of an arsehole, the story of the arsehole colleague. So I work in IT on a help desk for the NHS, and we're a little short staffed, no surprise there. This is an issue because the people phoning us are doctors and nurses trying to access patient records, write up treatment plans, update medication, etc. It's pretty essential they have access to their computers and that their computers are working. So as a result, we are not a log and flog desk. We can write down the issue and tell the caller someone will get back to them next week. We expect to have enough technical knowledge to fix the majority of issues over the phone with, when possible. So short staffed, as a result of this, we hired a contractor. We intentionally chose a higher rate of pay 
because we wanted to recruit an experienced person who could hit the ground running. Interviewed several candidates and eventually hired Tom. Tom, who says he'd been working on IT for several years and has worked on core desks before. Tom, who after a week it emerges has never logged a call in his life, doesn't understand the concept of save, doesn't understand that when creating a ticket that you have to describe the issue. Tom, who is actually a drain on the desk because even three weeks down the line, someone has to be constantly sat with him, not manning their phone because he needs help with every call. This is why we wanted someone experienced, someone who would take a few days to get up to speed with the local environment, but at least knows the difference between a computer mouse and his own arsehole. I don't have an issue with a person asking questions and have trained several people, but when you represent yourself as a seasoned IT contractor with experience in the industry, I don't expect to have to tell you that your machine is running Windows, how to find whether your machine is 64 or 32-bit, and that this is relevant when picking the correct version of software slash drivers to download. Eventually, my colleague Charlie has had enough. A user has phoned up and shouted at Charlie for 10 minutes because of a call Tom logged. Tom spent an hour with the person on the phone and all he wrote down was the word printer and its asset tag. No mention of any issues, no troubleshooting, no detail at all. Charlie fixes the issue in two minutes. Machine host and printer was not switched on. And then asked to speak to Tom about the call. Tom lies to Charlie's face and first of all says he didn't take the call. Then says he remembers that the user could not connect to the printer. He does not listen and what started as a constructive conversation about what to do next time ends up in a yelling match with Charlie asking Tom if he'd ever worked on a service desk and that his work is missing basic details and is not good enough. Said what we're all thinking frankly, boss doesn't stop it because he agrees. Tom then goes to complain to the boss. Boss calls me into the office and says as well as Tom having an issue with Charlie, Tom also think I speak to him rudely. Now, I've never said a bad word to Tom. I've tried to help him so many times and assist him with almost every call. This upsets me a lot and on the way home I cry and question whether I'm really a bad person and just don't know it. I decide that if Tom doesn't like the way I talk to him, I won't talk to him. No help for the person being paid more than me who thinks I'm a bitch anyway. A week later, when his call quality has dramatically dropped due to my not helping him anymore, several user complaints and escalations to directs about poor service, Tom gets let go. Oh well, what a shame, sorry to see him go, if only I could have spoken to him to tell him that. Why do people lie at interviews to try, I know obviously more money, but like a job in IT, especially when you're covering the NHS, the National Health Service, <laughs> surely you've got to have some confidence to do that. Surely Tom has got confidence, but no knowledge at all. <laughs> Gonna need a bib for that one. I work in a popular fast food restaurant where it's becoming common practice for people to customize their orders. Some remove ingredients and others add a few too many. But at night we get drunk people that frankly order thinking more with their stomach than their head. So this is the funniest instance of malicious compliance I've done at my job. The order came in, one of the cheapest burgers with extra of everything he could order. This is what he asked for. Extra ketchup, extra mustard, extra onion, extra pickles, add mayo, add lettuce, extra lettuce, add tomatoes, extra cheese, add sliced onion, add bacon. This particular guy was known for complaining that the portions were too small and demanding we make it again with more ingredients. Like every other time, he wanted a good amount of ingredients. So we in the kitchen said, okay, will do. By the time we assembled this burger, we had to put it in the biggest box we had. This guy got his food, sat down, and we all watched as he tried to take a bite. With the first bite, everything fell out the opposite side of the burger and right down his shirt onto his lap. He was a mess. He tried to complain about the burger was too messy and he can't eat it, to which my manager replied, it was made to your exact order. He walked off in a messy huff. He still comes in, but stopped complaining about how much we put into his burgers. <laughs> I'm assuming that's McDonald's, because I know you can customise your burgers there. And I'm so guilty of going into McDonald's drunk. But I've, I don't order extra ingredients and stuff, but I always have my uh, quarter pound with cheese and four chase of 99p burgers. <laughs> but I always don't complain. I don't kind of deal with the onions and stuff. So you'd think it's easier just to leave the ingredients out. Who knows? Want to hit? Okay, I'll hit. Obligatory mobile post, excuse any formatting errors, I'm pretty new to this. A little backstory, this event happened in junior high football. Around 7th grade, I was one of the smallest guys on the team, but what I lacked in size, I made up in toughness. I was a notoriously hard hitter. For some reason, the assistant coach had it out for me, but the head coach loved me to death. Well, on this particular day, the team was practicing punt coverage. I was the only one on the team who could long snap fire the ball back to the punter for it to be punted. So naturally, that was one of my extra positions. 
About three practice runs, the head coach is making some adjustments. So I was standing there with my football in my hand. I wasn't paying attention, simply because I didn't have to. All I had to do was snap the ball and run down the field and make a tackle. Well, the assistant coach decided he wanted to teach me a lesson because I wasn't paying attention. He gets one of the biggest guys on the team to lay me out while the head coach is adjusting the rest of the punt team. I'm talking this guy crushed me like a car stuck on train tracks. I was pissed, crying pissed. I get up and he says, the ball is live when you pick it up, gotta be ready for everything. I didn't say a damn word, but I immediately developed a plan. Every time someone was standing with a football in their hand, I was going to lay them out, especially the assistant's coach beloved son. His son was the softest kid on the team. I'm talking charming, ultra soft. You guys do that toilet roll in the, in the US as well? That's a great toilet roll. <laughs> Three ply, I think. Great stuff. I waited about a week until everybody forgot what happened. Assistant coach son was tossing the football before practice. I thought to myself, it's go time. As soon as he caught the ball, I crushed him. He immediately starts bawling, crying. Assistant coach was pissed and said, what the hell was that? I said, the ball is live. When you pick it up, you've got to be ready for everything. Head coach laughs like hell and I didn't even get into trouble. I just wonder why the assistant coach has it out for you. I mean, what, what's the point in this? But it sounds like you got some decent revenge on that one. I like it. So here we go. My bit I've been really looking forward to was a and a section because I really want to know what questions you guys have, if you had any at all. But I'm pleasantly surprised there's been a few good questions there. So we're going to start off straight off with Riley Rhodes. Hi, my question is, do you accept fan art? Of course I do. Um, the best place to do it is on is to tweet me at cringedaddy1 on Twitter. Um, and I would love to see what you actually think I look like or a mascot or some sort because that's what I'd really like to uh, I've been hoping to get a mascot of some sort for the channel I've got a couple of ideas but it'd be great to see what you guys could come up with Boris who we see every day in the chat top bloke top bloke daddy cringe can you acknowledge my existence and do you have EP stories of your own um, of course I acknowledge your existence I always look forward to your comment every single day and do I have EP stories of mine? I have one, but I don't have time to share it right now, but I will share it in a future future episode, I promise. Decius, Decius, apologies if I got the name wrong. What is your favorite genre of music? So my favorite genre, I like all music styles, but my favorite is sort of old school hip hop. None of this Drake shit, but we're talking like Dre, Wu-Tang Clan, Mob Deep, that, those, those sort of bands that love that sort of stuff. Crystal Water Drop, again, do you have a character I can draw? If you do, what do they look like? If you don't, can I make you one? Of course, as I said before, Cringe Daddy one on Twitter, would love to see what you come up with. And I don't have a character as yet, got a couple of ideas, um, but yeah, soon. Kitten in a towel, Daddy Cringe, cats or dogs? Well, from your name, I'm a bit worried because dogs is my personal favorite. <laughs> Don't unsubscribe, no, please. But I love cats. We've currently got like, we used to have a cat, um, but unfortunately it passed away. But we've, we've had a cat recently who seems to be moving into our house. It just comes in and sits on the sofa. We feel bad because it might have an owner somewhere, but at the same time, we don't want to kick it out because it looks quite comfy when it's sitting on our sofa. We just call it cat. Springtrap, what's your favorite fast food restaurant? My favorite fast food is always Indian. I love curries. I've got to the point now where I make my own curries from scratch with like base gravy and all that sort of boring stuff. Yeah, I won't go into it, but I absolutely love curries. Just the smell and everything. Oh, so good. Charlie's Random Ranch, great name. Have you ever seen any type of human being or dragon or something weird in the clouds? Um, I usually see like it, the things that I usually see is really weird it's like demons I see demons in the sky like with wings and stuff I can't remember. I used to play a game called Ultra Online just shows my age that does and they were called Balrogs they're like big huge, huge demon type things with wings on but that's yeah they're the kind of things I see in the sky messed up brain I tell you do you know the way of course I know the way just hit that subscribe button and follow me can you do a face reveal? Um, in a simple word, no. The internet is not ready for my face. <laughs> I can't I can't face the abuse. Maybe in the future, but the things I've been going through just recently, I cannot face any more abuse right now, you know? <laughs> Red Assassin coming in with, do you have a girlfriend with a family member? I'm assuming that's like all in one question. Do you have a girlfriend with a family member? No. <laughs> 
I can't pronounce your full name, but I'm going with Selma. When will you do a foot reveal? Just for you, Selma, right now. Here you go. Enjoy. Hey, better with, are you dating? My daughter wants to date you. Well, your daughter best have the best goddamn grades in the land. God, that sounds a bit weird. <laughs> Packs them in with, Daddy Cringe, could you give us bloopers or gag reels or failed cuts slash attempts, or maybe behind the scenes? Well, someone asked me this just recently. Um, I would love to do something for that, and I'd be very happy to do that, but generally, when I've edited a video and stuff, and I cut out all the, the crap and the mistakes I make, I usually just delete that file straight away and just keep the, like, the final version. So at the moment, I don't have any bloopers or anything, but in the future, if you guys are interested in that kind of thing, of course, I could keep the bloopers and put them all into a thing. But it's just a lot of me making mistakes and probably burping into the microphone accidentally and things like that. So it's not that interesting, to be quite honest. CM Force, why did you decide to make your channel? Well, in the past, I've made YouTube channels before. I've said in a couple of videos before, like I've made a gaming indie gaming review channel which i really enjoy doing because i love indie gaming and talking about it and things like that but i just love the community vibe you get from youtube channels and i made i made a video once i made like i made a reddit video and i got some really positive comments on it and it just suddenly blew up so i thought why not just continue doing it which i've done and you know the feedback i just get i can't really stop now i'm a bit addicted to be quite honest it's almost like therapy for me it's great if you were an entitled parent what would be your trigger nintendo switches as soon as i saw those i'll be nabbing those off anyone i gotta claim those for my kids you know <laughs> how much do you love your fans i love them this much i mean you can't see my hands right now but they're pretty wide they're as wide as i can go actually i just hit my monitor by doing that but <laughs> yeah you guys mean the absolute world to me. You guys are amazing. You're so, so, so supportive in in the channel and everything. I barely ever see any negativity in the comments anymore. And when I do, I can just generally ignore it. <laughs> but you guys have been absolutely amazing on Discord, Twitter, Facebook, everything. So thank you so much once again. Synagogue with Daddy Cringe. Favorite pastime when you're not making videos. Uh, my favourite pastime was gaming. I used, used to play a lot of battle royale games like everyone else does, MMOs, anything like that I'm really into. got a gaming PC, but I mainly use it for editing these days. Things are pretty crazy in my life for the past year, so I haven't had much time to do any gaming, so I'm so rubbish at it now. It's unbelievable. But one day I'll hopefully get back into it. But at the moment, between my job and getting home and making videos and stuff, which I really enjoy, um, I don't have much time for anything else. <laughs> Newbie, why is my dad gone? Mate, I'm your daddy now. <laughs> oh, that made me cringe. Little Billy in with, how many seven-year-old entitled children can you fight off? At least one and a half, I'm pretty confident. At least one and a half, two, I'm probably gonna get, gonna get downed, mate. Cringe twins, I'm glad you changed your profile pic back. Good stuff. <laughs> Will you ever make merch? I'll be your designer. Well, I've had a couple of people asking me about merch and I'm very, very tempted, but I don't want to be, I feel like I'm being like a bit of a knobhead, you know, buy my merch. <laughs> and I don't know in what route to go down if you want like entitled parent stuff on the merch or the logo, because who wants daddy cringe on a mug? <laughs> you got to be mad as to, <laughs> to have that on there. But yeah, the plan is at some stage, very, very soon in the future, I will be making merch and I will do some sort of giveaway to, to you guys for everything you've done for me. Um, I'll buy my own merch and then ship it out to you guys. So yeah, keep an eye out for that as well. When did you start your first channel? Oh my word. So I've had a few YouTube channels in the past, um, but I think my first one must have been about eight years ago. And it was probably one of these gaming channels. It was like when you, the gaming channel started taking off and stuff. And I got like around a thousand subscribers on that one, but nothing like I'm seeing now. And, you know, it was the days when PewDiePie was gaming and, 
you just got buried instantly. So it, it's, it was pretty pointless. You were never ever gonna get anywhere. I know I did enjoy it, but you know, in the end of the YouTube, you have to look at the numbers because what's the point in talking to yourself? There isn't no point really. <laughs> Rohan, good to see you. Always good to see you in the comments, bro. Um, so favorite game, as I said, I haven't had much time for gaming recently, but my favorite game would have to have been Ultima Online. Now you guys, probably not hardly any of you have heard of this, but it's a, like, it was like one of the original MMOs and it was such an amazing game. It was so hardcore. You go out in the world, you get killed by another player and all that sort of stuff. And you know, there's guarded towns and all that kind of good stuff. But yeah, it was a great game. If you like MMOs and you like the history of MMOs, look at Ultima Online. Shark Tooth in with, why do you use those stupid faces in the thumbnail? It's a real turn off seeing them. Well, I get real mixed opinions on the thumbnails. I love making the stupid faces. Some people absolutely love them. And I think they stand out on YouTube. And ultimately, it's how, when I think of entitled parents, that is the stupid faces I see. I see stupid faces like that and I've just got to recreate them. When, when I think, when I'm reading a post and I see a stupid comment, like in one of the last episodes, it was, um, it was about a lady's skin being too dark for their baby. And I can just picture the entitled parent or aunt's face just just staring at me and I've got to recreate that for the thumbnail. So I'm afraid that, that is gonna be my thumbnails. I can't change those because I love doing them. Shadmin Kuro Blackwood, can you do a collab with Illuminati? Illuminati, oh God, I, I have real trouble saying the name. And she could voice the EM and you could voice the EDs. It would be awesome. Now, I've often thought about those sort of collabs where one could voice one and one voice the other. And I really love the thought of that. But I think Illuminati is sort of like a bit out of my league. She, I think she's like a much higher YouTuber. I don't think she'd be interested in that sort of stuff. But if she ever did, pff, I'm down, you know? <laughs> As she's a fantastic YouTuber and deserves great credit. She puts a lot of effort into her videos, so. Give me your nose in with, how tall are you? <sighs> Damn, you have to come in with that, don't you? I'm five foot eight, so yeah, I'm pretty sure it sucks. But have, being short has its advantages sometimes. I don't bump my head on doors, all that kind of thing. The only thing that really annoys me is like my jeans that I wear and my trousers that I wear, they're like the perfect height to get caught on door handles, you know, the little belt loops always happens to me. It's so annoying. And Emily Rue in with the last question. Do you like horror movies? And if so, which ones are your favorite? Now, I am a massive horror movie fan. I'm looking forward to watching um, Pet Cemetery 2. Not a big Pet Cemetery fan, but you know, I like Stephen King and all that sort of, that sort of stuff. But my favorite, favorite, favorite horror movie of all time is the old school Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Not the new sort of, not the new polished version, but the old gritty style one where the guy comes out with a hammer and bops the guy on the head and he's, he sounds like a pig. Oh, it's immense. If you haven't seen that film, watch it because it's such, such a great, great movie. As always, click that like button, that subscribe button, if you like the content, of course. Don't click it if you don't like it because that would just make no sense either. But if you got to this stage, I'm hoping you did like it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> thank you very much, guys.